Good morning, y'all. So, uh, I'm open up with your tail, bud. Hey, go ahead. You can eat your food. He's like, but there's nothing special in it. <laughs> um, so, we have a mess of dishes that we didn't get to last night. I'm going to try to knock out this morning. Um, but I'm going to make some green smoothies first. I wanted to show you guys what we put in it. So, I always put almond milk in it. I usually use the unsweetened vanilla or the unsweetened original. To me, they pretty much taste the same. Uh, and then yogurt. This, we accidentally got vanilla. We actually usually use plain, but I need to use this up. And then frozen fruit. This is one we get at Costco, but, you know, whatever frozen fruit you like. Some greens. We'll typically use spinach or kale. This is stuff that was starting to get old, and so we stuck it in the freezer. So we'll use that. That works really well. And then we always put in like collagen peptides we get at Costco, same with this. But this really makes the smoothie taste really good. It's vanilla, protein powder, and we really like this particular one. And then bananas. Now, <laughs> we talked about our mice problem in the pantry, and so we moved our bananas to the fridge. I don't love cold bananas, however, and this is perfect. And these are obviously looking a little worse for wear, but they're going to be perfect in this and nice and sweet. And there they are. It actually didn't make as much as normal. But honestly, like, I don't remember where we got these. I think I may have successfully found them on Amazon, so I can link it for y'all. But we got them, like, at a grocery store or whatever. Anyway, okay, it was Meyer. I know which store it was. My favorite store in the world. Okay. <laughs> anyway, usually we fill these up for each of us, and it's just too much. Like, these are pretty big. And so I've told Tyler recently, I'm like, you know, when you make mine, maybe just do, like, half because it's a lot. But, uh, and then Miss Gigi really likes these too. So she's got, this is actually one of her old sippy cups. We don't really use these anymore uh, with her. But these, my mother-in-law or her Nana, Benita, got these for her. And they are so perfect because they can fit on different cups. And then you can just stick like a little straw in it. We use like a silicone one with her. It's just a little safer. But she loves these smoothies because I'm telling you, they taste so good. <laughs> Here you go. Want your smoothie? Okay. Well, her friends, she uh, already drank what she had and asked me for more of mine, so. Snow White. Yeah, it's Snow White. So anyway, she drank like all of hers and then asked for some of mine. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so maybe I should start getting a full one. So then by the time I share most of mine with her, <laughs> anyway. How cute. Oof. Gigi, are you going to get bigger? No. You're not going to get any bigger? Yes, what? Yeah! <laughs> what book is that? Mini book. Wow, special mini book? Where's it from? Well, it's blanky. It's your blank right there. Mm-hmm. No, he's not in the blankie. He's upstairs right now. I think he's on mommy and daddy's bed sleeping as usual. Silly <laughs> Noki. Okay, time to tackle the dishes now. I think I'm going to take one of those pictures on Instagram where there's like the before where it's messy and then you tap on the Instagram story and it goes to the next one and it's clean because that would be very satisfying. So back to this drawer here. I uh, <laughs> feel like I've talked about this drawer a weird amount. <laughs> but now that everything's fitting in here nicely and obviously it's not perfect, I want to basically what happens is this will slide like this and that drives me crazy or this will slide back and not be even the way I want it to be. <laughs> so I have this sticky tack that I use just in various places in the house. It's like one of those things that if you have it, you will find a million uses for it. Anyway, I figure I'm gonna stick some underneath these so that way hopefully they don't slide around when I'm opening and closing the drawer. Okay, it worked. Nothing's moving, nothing's budging. This is fantastic. I, oh, I'm so happy to have this drawer like finally together and organized the way we need it now that we have kids because basically and by kids I mean one kid calm down but uh <laughs> I just feel like ever since we had her we never really readjusted this drawer for things that we now use right like different size spoons and forks 
Well, straws, I guess, were more for me, but still, anyway, this is great. Wooey. So I just filmed the first of my Jammy Awards and it's always so exciting and it feels different every year. That's what's so bizarre. And I feel like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but every time I sit down to do this, I'm like, oh my gosh, is it really time? First of all, you know what I mean? Just year wise. But also it just, I feel like I've grown a little every single year I've done it. So it's kind of weird and cool to go back and see previous Jammy Awards, like when I'm kind of seeing what I'm picking and just curious what I've picked in previous years. And it's just, it's kind of cool to see that year to year I've grown and changed and yeah, I don't know. It's just a weird, awesome experience. But this video uh, actually should be live today. The day you're seeing this, it might already be live. So if it is, we'll link it below. Woohoo! Okay, so we're gonna share, here we are everyone. It's I got like you said I got last time, it feels so formal when we sit down and talk like this. It does. Uh, <laughs> I feel so like Kelly and Ryan. So anyway. <laughs> it's like that episode of Super I know, Story. I know. <laughs> of course. I don't even have coffee. Or water. I, I just drank my last... I did grab my water. Oh, mine's empty. Oh, well. I didn't grab any tea. We should be drinking tea right now. That's okay. I just forget it. I ruined it. <laughs> we already lean on the loquacious side when we talk about books. So if we have coffee, we're going to slow down even more and just be like, so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, we talked about the first books or the books we read in the first half of the year in July and we'll link that video below if you want to see what we read in the first half of the year. This is yes. from July till now. No. I've read 14. I've read 15. You start... That's more than I've ever read in a year for the I read, actually, but, did you see on Goodreads? However many I've read. I read 35 books this year, but it's cool because you can see, if I can pull it up, it shows you. Do you look at like your goal? At the very bottom, no, it says Tyler's year in books. So you oh, can yeah. see I read 11,615 pages. Um, Wait, where did you see that? At the very, go to go to my book and then at the bottom. Oh, Pinocchio. It's like the shortest book. The longest book I read mm -hmm. was Washington. Average book length, 341 pages. It's pretty, just pretty cool to see the, uh, yeah. anyway. And I know we get asked a lot. We're, I don't share my Goodreads account just because I don't have much privacy in my life. So <laughs> This is nice what was causing us to laugh that, like, so much last time. We filmed it three times before we finally got it filmed. And we said that exact phrase so many times. But in case you it didn't was, know, that's why we don't ridiculous. supply it and share it. Okay. <laughs> it's our last bastion of right. privacy. All right. Okay. So you said... <laughs> Go ahead. It really is. <laughs> we were right. funny in July and we're funny now, <laughs> at least in our heads. Oh, it's not loading. I got the screenshots though. Yeah. All right, are we gonna go from where we were to now? Yes. So the last one I talked about was Bob Iger's book, and okay. then I. Picked so we up we there. can't dwell. Three sentences per book, yeah. All right, we're gonna keep it sh short, sweet, and to the point. Let's All go. right. So right after we did that video, I finished the book A Gentleman in Moscow, which you're gonna read soon. Yes, yeah, I yeah, actually I, that was just one got I told it. You. So I'm excited to read that. I didn't rate a lot of books that I read five stars. This is one I did, and it's weird because it's set in Russia. I don't know a lot about Russia. I didn't think I would care about it, but so many people I saw liked it, read it, and I was like, you know what? It, It's one that I think about. I was so annoyed by your phone making a noise. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Am I okay? It's a death stare. <laughs> anyway, it was just, it's one of those books I think about a lot. It's this guy that uh, gets in trouble with the law. It's part of history, so you have to, but, uh, and it's, it's basically, a novel, right? yes, but it's historical fiction, my favorite genre, and he gets, basically quarantined if you will in this hotel to live out the rest of his days literally and so he's not allowed to leave the hotel and it is so good i remember during it you kept saying i don't know if i'm gonna like it I, and then like at the end you were like i loved it and i can't i think about it a weird amount so there yeah. you go yeah that's why i added it to my list because you you raved about it so much mm -hmm. Your turn. okay so the next one i read was handmaid's tale also based on jessica's recommendation um i these are fighting words, I know. I didn't love it, and I don't really like the TV show either. I liked the show better than the book. Those are fighting words I right will there. say, though, a lot of... I still have not finished even the first season of Handmaid's Tale, and everyone who oh. said, has said it gets so much better. So yeah. I will eventually pick it back up, but... It's also a hard one to watch, though, just generally. Yeah. It's a dark, uh, Well, dystopian. dark doesn't bother me. It's just... It's very dystopian, Yeah. Obviously. It's just... So I don't know. I, w I, I, think, I think it was because it was so... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? People kept recommending it so much, and it yeah. just never lived up to the hype. I think that's why. If I had just picked it up and read it, I think I would have liked it, but people yeah. overhyped it, and that's why I didn't like it as much. The l book Little Fires Everywhere. Um, that one is one that's on Hulu. I still haven't watched it. It's got Carrie yeah. Washington and Reese Witherspoon. Um, it's got to be good, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sure that it is. 
The book was interesting, but I only rated it three stars because I just kind of felt like it was like, yeah. Like, it wasn't bad. Yeah. But it, I clearly like books that make me think deeply about certain things, even though I still like fiction. I like that depth in some books. This one, like, wanted to have depth, and it was, like, so close, but it wasn't quite there for me. Hmm. But I have a feeling I would like the show better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Carrie Washington and Reese Witherspoon. Come on. How good is that going to um, be? I guess we should say what any of these are about. We didn't even... That one basically is just oh, about yeah, okay. this mom and her daughter that moved to this like very suburban, like perfect town and just kind of what happens with that. And it's, like I said, it's interesting, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I felt about Casual Vacancy. And I've been wanting to read this literally, I think my mom bought me this for Christmas in like 2010. <laughs> and I never read it. Maybe it wasn't wow. quite that long ago. I don't even know if it's It that might old. have been though. Uh, but I finally read it this year and I did like it. I, I liked it. Okay, it was kind of hard to get into because it's about this little town called Pagford. And there's like, uh, a, a, at the casual vacancy, somebody passes away who's on the parish council and they have to replace his seat. And it took me about half the book to figure out who all these characters were because there's so many mm. characters that you that you get introduced to at first. And I'm like, wait, who who is this person? Once you get past it and once you realize who all these characters are, uh, it gets much better. I actually liked the book. There was an HBO miniseries, like a three-part miniseries that I was really excited to watch, and I did not really like the show. I caught some of that when you were watching. It was just kind of like... meh, and I'm like, that's probably why nobody talked about it. But I did like the book. Um, if you like mystery, not even mystery, that's not the right word, but if you if you like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just a story about this town. It's not a mystery. It's not like, you you know everything that's going on. It's just kind of is an interesting story. So not, I, I wouldn't, it's not highly recommended, but if you like J.K. Rowling, I wouldn't say don't read it. Is that helpful? <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, oh, at the end of July, I read the book Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. And uh, wow, I learned a lot about the issues with a lot of incarceration and the death penalty. And you know, it's funny. It's obviously the second you bring something like this up, it gets political. It was a very interesting read and very illuminating and if you're someone that feels like you want to read something to learn about that kind of thing, this would be a great one. It was an easy to understand book too. However, there are a lot of facts and figures and stuff in there too and lawyer talk, like talking about it, because he's basically, and this is all true, Brian Stevenson was a lawyer, is a lawyer for Equal Justice Initiative, which he eventually created, which is an initiative that we donate to from time to time. And we did, when I did the Black Owned Makeup Brands video, that was one that we were donating to because I, I really, feel like what they're doing is really good work. So anyway, that was... Yeah, and that they just was, made a movie about that, right? They made it a while ago, and actually, uh, I think over the summer, it was available to watch, and we never got to. I wonder if it still is. I'll have to look at it. Uh, see. Yeah, because I'm dying to see that. Kitchen Confidential. I started reading this book years and years ago, and then I set it down and never finished it, so I picked it back up, and I started from the beginning again. It's from by Anthony by Bourdain. By Anthony Bourdain. It, this is like his very first book, the one that basically made Anthony Bourdain who he was and you this is how he got his tv show and basically became you know a uh, celebrity uh it is amazing and if you listen to audiobooks this is one to do on audiobook as well because i usually do half and half i read in bed at night night and stuff but then if i'm out working in the yard or stuff you know i'll have my headphones in listening mm -hmm. to it so i you know uh he reads it and you have to hear it in his voice because if you ever liked mm -hmm. his shows you know his narration you know his style uh it is so good and it's all about the culinary underbelly and all the things that happen in kitchens that you probably don't want to know about, but you should definitely read it. It's hysterical. Amazing. His long hair. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm like low energy. I probably should have had a coffee. You could have espresso. You want to take a pause, get an espresso? Yeah. All right. Pause. So we're uh, taking a break from filming because Tyler's making some espresso for us, but showing you where our little setup and how this boy is hidden behind safely. Sweet boy, being a good boy. Say, so, yeah, but don't tell anyone I'm here. Okay, we won't. Mm. Okay. All right. Much now, better. yes. Much more cozy. Oh, Let's talk books. This next one, I rated two stars. Uh, it was called Normal People. Again, I think there's like a Hulu or a TV. You're going to see a, a trend <laughs> pattern here. <laughs> but the thing is, I just, it was okay. Like, I just, it was just a story about these two friends and how they like grew together then apart and then they like loved each other and then they didn't and then they did and it was just one of those the thing that i did find interesting was that it was set in if i'm remembering right i think ireland or maybe scotland i don't remember which but um so there was just some things about it were interesting in hearing about university life there but 
Beyond that, it was just... I honestly don't even remember you talking about this book. I did. I read it very fast and I was like, okay. Meh. Yeah. I'm, I'm mean. I'm like a mean, picky reader. You're those... Because literally... Uh, I don't leave reviews though because I roll reads, my eyes hard Goodreads reviews. reviews are harsh. No. Like, I, I won't even read them because I'm like... I, I don't want them to poison my brain before I, I know, read the before, book. I know. I agree. Um, so actually, after this, I read the Harry Potter series again because it was getting close to fall. And so I read the Harry Potter series. Oh, yeah, But then... Did. Uh, and I literally, I listened. So really you've read. <laughs> no, that was in, well. 21 books. In book. Well, yeah. But the actual <laughs> next book that I read, but I listened to them so fast because I know the story and I just want to, I just have them like, so I listen to them like vibe, while I'm driving and working. You want the feelings of it, yeah. Something like two times speed. So I don't, it's mm -hmm. just, anyway. Then I read The Color of Law. So this book was, it's a forgotten history of how government segregated America. And it was. It was dry while I was reading it because it's kind of it, there's a lot of facts and figures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in hindsight, it was incredibly interesting and incredibly um, illuminating. And I think a lot of, everyone needs to read this book because honestly, what they need to have like an abridged version where he doesn't go into all the historical details, they, but gives you the the overall view of everything because everyone needs to read this book. And I, this is a little on the dry side, but it's. It's really, really important that everyone reads this book. It is. You, you've you shared a lot with me about all of this. And actually, we were refinancing our home because with interest rates so low. Yeah, yeah. And you were actually talking to the title, the woman working at the title office and explaining about this. this stuff. And, and she's she like, are you, like kidding? are you kidding? That's so interesting. We're like, how do you not know this? <laughs> this is your line but, of work. I mean, so hopefully but she read about, it too. Yeah, you know? about redlining and about subprime mortgages and all these things. Richard just, Rothstein. He was also one that did create quick little one or two minute videos about this. Very simplified yeah. that were being passed around a lot I in the probably, summer. We um, should probably link those below. Yes, because yeah. it, it's, it's but awful. But looking back, I am so glad eye -opening. that I read this because it, it, I learned a lot. Yes. Um, oh, I read Colin Jost's book, A Very Punchable huh, Face. That's my He's, next one too. Nice. Perfect. I think I, because after that heavy book and learn, you being depressed, then I was like, I need something just super duper laughable. So I read this and you read it right after I did. <laughs> Yes, because you told me to, and I read it in, yeah. Like, or no, maybe you read it first, then I read it. It doesn't matter, but we both read it at is, the same time. That is, because I was waking you up laughing. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I kept, I would be just about to fall asleep, and Jessica would laugh <laughs> in bed, and I'm like, what, what, what? And you're like, I can't help it. It's so funny. But I think it's funny to me. I don't know that everyone will think it's funny, funny. You thought it was really funny? It was hysterical. He reminds me of my brother to a certain extent, so it's almost I, as I if my brother is... I think he's hysterical. I, I do think. He's the guy from SNL that does yeah. Weekend Update. With he's Michael Che. I yeah, love them together. Writer. Yeah. He so and Che are both head writers. Just an easy, funny read. Just like little memoirs and stories yeah. about his life. And it's I, just funny. I think everyone would find it funny. If you if you watch our videos and find us even remotely humorous, I think you'll you'll just think this yeah. is hysterical. That Do was I technically go? both of our next books. Right. So you go ahead. Okay. The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I rated this four stars. Almost did five. It's about, oh my gosh, this network of spies during World War II. Yes. And um, it's just, it's all these female spies and what they kind of went through. And again, it's historical fiction, but my understanding is it's based on, Pretty accurate. Ac you know, things that were actually happening, similar things. And it's just, again, it's a, it's a time of history I don't know a lot about, especially, you know, what I do know is from America's point of view. And so it's, I think they're in Britain and in parts of France. Again, I'm like mixing all these books up, but it was very interesting and it was, it wasn't dry because it was a novel, so I really liked reading that. It took yeah. me a little bit longer, though. I was kind of thoughtfully reading it. You Which know one? That was the Alice Network? The Alice Network, yeah. 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 Um, the next one I read was my homeboy, Rick Steves' book, called... It's so shiny. <laughs> For the Love of Europe, it just came out. And it's just a series of essays and different uh, travel um, uh, stories from his years of traveling to Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's just, if you if you like Rick Steves, if you like Europe, if you like travel... It's just, it's just a fun, quick little read. It's got a ton of pictures from his years of traveling. Um, and I just, it was just a very happy, very happy read for me, especially in a year when you can't travel. It was yeah. kind of an armchair travel book. <laughs> I haven't heard that phrase. I like that. All right. Uh, Daisy Jones and the Six. We can both talk about that one. Yes. You read it too. I, yeah. Mine was pretty far down, but. So we this both is, did I did not think I'd like this, but uh, someone I used to teach with highly, highly recommended it, and I trust her and her opinion. So I decided to read it. It's about a rock band in the, what, 60s, 70s? Yep. And they, you know, hit number one on the charts over and over again. And it's about some relationships. And it's written as though it's this big, long interview with all these different people telling yeah. the story. 
And the thing that's crazy is it's so well written in that way. I numerous times had to look up and make sure that Daisy Jones, Daisy Jones and the Six wasn't a real band. Yeah. But yeah. it's based uh, loosely-ish, but kind of strongly on Fleetwood Mac. And um, and you really don't like 70s music. I just I like don't. 70s I mean, music. there's some that I do. Well, of course. But, but I don't know what it is. 70s there's... rock is not your, your style mm. at all. And so it's funny that you were like, Tyler, you should read this book. And... I really, I, and again, it was in Reese's uh, book club and they're making a movie out of it. <laughs> Another one, right? Or a mini series. Something, something like, like that. Yeah. But yeah, it was good. It was, and it's, again, it's one of those ones you think about a lot. Yeah. 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 And I've, I've just never read a book like this. That's basically never a have giant I ever. interview. Like it literally, it's, it's almost like it reads like a script because it's like Warren, here's something I never told anyone. Like, and then <sighs> Billy, after I left Daisy, I tried to read, like, it's literally like a script. It's, or uh, yeah. an interview. It's, yeah. It's very interesting. It is. That one was five stars. Whoa. So my next one was Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Also five stars. It's about this like woman that uh, had kind of an, an odd, interesting childhood. And she's very, um, not secluded, but reclusive. She works, but then like on the weekend, she just like stays in. She's very in her head. And it's just her and how she kind of comes out of her shell a little bit. And it is the most interesting story. I don't want to tell you anything else because it's so odd and sad and funny and poignant and it's just got it all. And I read that very fast. Like that was a page turner for me. So you yeah. would like it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think you would. I've got, I've got like three I know, books I know. on my but list it, to read It was next, good. So. If you're just Only... looking for a good book to read yeah. that's a novel, I think you'd like it. Yeah. Yeah. There are sad parts though. Fair warning. Uh, next I read, so I'm trying to read more about the Revolutionary War in that whole time period in our, our why, founding why? fathers. And... Why? Why? That's right, it came out weird. Why? Why? I don't know, well, I'm why? just like, Tell you're me. reading so much, and my, my brother, we talked to them a well, decent that, amount, part, and yeah. he is a geek on this, so, but, so we can we, talk to him about We went it. out to the East Coast, and he, we went to, like, Bunker Hill and all these other places. I'll link those videos below from our road trip. <laughs> and it really kind of sparked my interest, and I'm like, I really don't know a lot about our constitution and our founding fathers and all that stuff. And yeah. I feel like even today we all talk about, well, it's not constitutional to do this or it's kind of, you know, you, and so I'm like, I need to learn about this because this is even today, you know, here we are all these years later. So I'm like, I'm trying to read a bunch about the revolutionary war and the founding of our country. So 1776, um, I've read a couple other books about this time period. This was not my favorite. Um, it was interesting, but it's only really about the year 1776, obviously. But what was hard for me with this book is it's a, it's it was more dry than some of the other ones that I've read. Um, it's a little bit more, here's a date, here's what happened, here's, you know, the people. It's not as, um, which is, I guess, what you want in it, historical. You don't want him to give it their own opinion. Um, but the hardest part for me was, like, trying to visualize where things were because it talks a lot about battles and stuff like that. Yeah. And I didn't have, like, I don't know New York City all that well. I don't know the rivers. And they'd say, okay, we're the huts. You know, the British were coming over uh, and where the Hudson met this river. And I'm like, I can't picture that in my head. Yeah. Um, and that was the hardest part for me in like Boston and stuff like that. They, you know, and they, they had were... some maps in, the, in but, this yeah. book. So I found, I, I think a lot of people were feeling that way. So I found this and it's the illustrated version. And if you want to read this book, spend the extra money. I found this at Half Price Books for like 25 bucks. So it's still expensive. Yeah. But... This is way better because I was actually able to visualize the people that they're talking about and the documents and the maps and all kinds of stuff. You know, there was paintings that they were showing as they were talking about, you know, these paintings of uh, these battle scenes. And so it was a lot easier to visualize um, with things like this and houses that they're talking about and all kinds of stuff. So oh, cool. uh, it made it a lot more understandable um, after seeing the illustrated version. So highly recommend that. Um, and then I was like, actually, it was really good and really interesting. Uh, yeah, that might be too dry for my bones. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I liked that. I want to say that again. I liked that, actually. I like the way that rolled off my tongue. <laughs> oh, Something boy. Something to soak your bones in? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's too dry to soak them in. Uh, all right, next one I read was Bad Blood. and it, uh, Sorry, Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup. I know we keep saying Silicon Valley because we're <laughs> Midwesterners. Back Silicon here. Valley. We know we're Silicon wrong. We know Valley. We're wrong. Yep, that's us. Anyway, um, I gave this one four stars, leaning five, because it. Uh, first of all, I never read books like this. I really do love fiction and historical fiction and novels, 
Or like comedy funny books, you know what I mean? Yeah. Comedy funny books. I try and do a little bit. Of, I try and do... You do a good mix. Go back and forth. So, um, you know, a novel, then, you know, mm -hmm. a biography, then a historical yeah. something or whatever, but... Um, but with this one, I, again, it was someone on Goodreads that I trust. They always are reading interesting books and then I read them and like them. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to read it. And it, it's just a true story about this, this company that had this invention that just never worked. And so this CEO would push it and like got these huge name brands to sign on like Walgreens to have this invention for health reasons. I don't want to tell everything in Walgreens stores and then in the end it never ever worked like it's wild how many people were bamboozled by this woman it's wild now I mean it was so recent you can look up videos on YouTube about her because she has this really bizarrely low voice and maybe it's put on maybe it's fake she dressed like a uh, uh, Apple Steve Jobs yeah she idolized him so she would dress like it like guys it's so interesting and it wasn't that. as dry as I thought it'd be yeah again I was like what happens like because it's so recent it's it's so interesting y'all and then I was on a rabbit hole online yeah looking all this up but anyway, I would like to read that one that does sound pretty yeah. interesting to me you'd probably read it in a week less than a week um, so, going old school, Legends of Sleepy oh, Hollow. Oh, technically we both, because we listened to the audiobook together. Yes, because it was getting to be close to Halloween. I should add that to my good reads, and baby. it was just like, I've never actually yeah. read this. And so, we were driving and I was like, let's just listen to it. It's only like a two hour book or something I don't like even that think it was, audiobook. I think it was like 90 minutes. Yeah, it was not long at all. And so, we were like, we're just going to listen to it. And so, we did Sleepy okay. Hollow. That was very entertaining. Because again, everyone knows the story of Sleepy Hollow from the Disney cartoon. Honestly, from, I didn't really know it. Like, the, I knew who he was. And like, the oh, Headless Horseman. You know, like, the basics of yeah, it. Yeah. But I've never actually actually read it. So, uh, did enjoy that one. Uh, one I read very, very quickly was the book Where'd You Go, Bernadette. Uh, and again, I think that one's a movie with uh, Kate Blanchett, actually. I only did three stars. I didn't think it was bad, but it wasn't, like, one I'd be like, you have to read. It was an interesting book while I was reading it. You were curious about where it was going, but beyond that... You know, you close it and you're like, okay. And you move on with your life. Yeah. But it was good. It was interesting. Like, I would watch the movie or whatever it is. Um, okay. So, the next one I read is called One Man's Wilderness. And Jessica's brother, Michael, uh, suggested this. And it was really super duper interesting. This guy who basically became a hermit. Um, and he moved to Alaska in the 70s and built his own log cabin. And he talks about building it. He talks about, you know, being out there by himself. Um, and he just, it's, it's, it's. It's pretty fascinating. And I read it while I was editing the Alaska video, so it put me very much in the right mindset of uh, pictures are beautiful. You know, How do you get this great of pictures? In I the know. 70s? And that's what's so on funny. On his too. own. What was he taking yeah. these with? Um, but it's it was it was I, I really did like this book. Talks about the animals and the wildlife and you know, going out and you know, oh, how like he Walden. survived and not really. This more one was a lot more interesting than Walden, than Walden yeah. <laughs> Which we'll get to. Yes. But yeah, I really did like this. And again, if you do this, uh, there is a Kindle version, but this is one that I would highly suggest you actually get the physical book because the color pictures are incredible, even given the time period. Um, yeah, I don't it's, know it's, how he... it's pretty amazing, the photography He's that he took. He's in some of the pictures. Yeah, so it, I always... I think Nick Offerman did a foreword to this, and he talks at some that point... That sounds like his yeah, brand. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it's very much, yeah. But he talks about how he loves the idea of him setting the camera up on a tripod and walking over and then standing to get the picture taken. Uh, anyway, and apparently okay. there's a documentary about it um, that is occasionally shown on PBS, but I, I, would, I would like to watch that too. So the next one I read, I ranked four stars, Station Eleven. It's called Station Eleven. I, that was, anyway. <laughs> uh, and it's a book about, I'm going to turn some of you guys off right away, but I feel you pulling away. Just pull, <laughs> let me pull you back in. It's about a pandemic. However, when I, when the first fourth of the book, I thought, why am I reading this? Like, this is just depressing. However, if you're into theater, it also talks a lot about theater and Shakespeare, which is cool. That's a big part of this. But beyond just me liking theater, it about halfway through, I realized it was giving me such good perspective on how much worse it could have been. Because in this book, the pandemic killed like 99.5% of all people. So there's so few people left that are just kind of roaming the ruins for like decades. It's so bizarre. It sounds very much like The Stand, which is like one of what I just got. I'm, I'm going to read that here soon. Interesting. Because it's, I, I mean, I just read The Inside Jacket. I don't know anything about Stephen King's The Stand, but it just, it sounds like the same thing where the, the, there's a, a pandemic that kills 99% of the population. So I'll yeah, be intrigued I mean, to hear yeah. how they are similar. I, I would be too, but it's it was very, very good. And a friend of mine, who's also my friend on Goodreads, just read it too, and she really liked it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm always excited when someone reads something I also like and then we can talk about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next I read Joel McHale's book called Thanks for the Money. <laughs> How to use my life story to become the best Joel McHale you can be. And it's just, if you know who I Joel McHale is. I honestly didn't even know you read this. How fast did you read it? You, I talked about it. Oops. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's, it's just, if you know who Joel McHale is, if you liked The Soup, if you liked that style of comedy, you're going to love this book. Um, he's just... It, he's very much got his own sort of brand of comedy. Um, so if you like Community, like he was in that, or if you like The Soup, I mean, you you know if you like Joel McHale, and if you do, you're going to love this book. It's it's hysterical. Yeah. Looks pretty good. I might read that. Everyone talks about how I remind them of Joel McHale, which you do kind is of very you're flattering for him. <laughs> that was a very Joel McHale joke. joke. Nice. Uh, all right. So next I read Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. I, dang, I only gave it two stars. I thought I at least yeah, gave it three. you did not like that book. Because, okay, Leanne Moriarty is the one that wrote Big Little Lies. Fantastic show. Fantastic book. But you're meeting these nine people that are going to this health resort to get better. And again, it was one of those books that takes such a weird turn about two-thirds of the way through. And it's so abrupt and it doesn't really make sense that you're like, okay, it, it's just, you're just looking at it with the side eye the whole time. It just wasn't great. Wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Didn't yeah, like you, it. you were telling me about it, and you were like, no, hated it. And a lot of you guys, when I mentioned it in some video, commented and said, I felt the same way. I'm like, okay, I'm glad I'm not crazy, because I think she's no. a good writer. I just don't think this was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next book I read was um, Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World, Volume 3. Uh, third edition, sorry. And uh, again, obviously, I love Walt Disney World. This is just one of those ones that she talks about all the... It's, it's all those little details that sort of add up to make Walt Disney World as amazing as it is. And if you like Disney parks, you're going to love it. I mean, that's really uh, what it boils down to. That easy. Definitely the first volume is the best. They get progressively more specific. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You I were kind of about that. telling me about that. Because like, I read one and two. Yeah. I can imagine three, she was digging even harder. Yeah. And it's, it's the, there are ones that are not like super interesting and they're kind of, they're very, very detail specific. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she'll be like, okay, look at this. And then, you know, the third one from the right, you know, that orange bit up there, that's, I'm like, you really, I mean, so again, you have to know Disney World really well. Um, but uh, I definitely recommend the first two. But it's so funny because a lot of that stuff is like the thing she talks about in the first book. The rides aren't even there anymore. The, you know, things have changed so much. That's an interesting so point. Yeah. I would say if you read one, actually, you probably should read this one because it's definitely the, this just came out. Um, so that I think is, if yeah. you're starting, even volume one is, if you're a Disney nerd enough, you'll still like to hear about some of the things the that older are gone rides, because true. it's kind of like Yeah, it. that's true. We own all of them because we are Disney <laughs> nerds. All right. Uh, I, next I read, we can talk about it at the same yeah. time, H. John Benjamin's book, Failure is an Option. That's a quick, like, weekend read. Yeah, it was funny. You liked it, I think, more than it. I did. Yeah. He's the guy that voices Archer and, and Bob's Bob Burgers. from Bob's Burgers. But again, so... the difference was, I think, I I did the thing where I half read it, half listened to yeah. it. You just read it, so you didn't get to hear I would have felt weird it. feeling like Bob Bob was narrating. Yeah, but I think I think that's why you didn't like it as much as I Maybe. did, because you need to hear him. I mean, we Some know of the stories voice. made me laugh out loud. It's not yeah. that there weren't absolutely hilarious, but you, again, I think you built it up a lot, and I was yeah, like... Yeah, but there there are a few awful. that just... That did, yeah, they were Just make you funny. absolutely laugh out loud. But again, you have to hear him. Do also, it. please know a lot of the parts are inappropriate. So, oh, there's a lot of inappropriate things in a lot of these books. So, by I wouldn't say a lot. I mean, Kitchen Confidential, like there's stuff. Well, in I think there. you'd expect Colin that from Joe's Anthony Bourdain. Book, Joe McHale's book. So, really, um, any of the comedies? Really, any of the ones that I talk about. <laughs> um, all right. So, the last one, the one I just finished, was, and you've got two more you can talk about. Yeah, and actually, I have one honorable mention I want to go grab real fast. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes from The Hunger Games. It says The Hunger Games, number zero, because it goes before <laughs> one, two, and three. It's fine. I think if you're upset, I've talked about this recently in our vlog, so bear with me. I think if you're super into The Hunger Games, you'd probably like it, because it's it's the same writer, it's the style of, but I just, it was okay. I definitely still prefer one, two, and three over this one. It was just okay. I don't think yeah. anyone needs to read it. Yeah, it was I have interesting no, I have enough no while I read it. It wasn't like it was boring or anything. When but I read, the, I read the okay. three Hunger Games, and I kind of felt that about the original Hunger Games too. Oh. I was like, meh. I liked the Hunger Games. I definitely I thought one I, and two. Once it got to three, I was like, yeah. okay, like it was. I, I did know. like it when I was reading it, but it's not like anything. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to read that again, or can't yeah. like it was like it was enjoyable. I don't, I didn't dislike it, but I'm not like I didn't love it. 
Uh, okay, so then it's I read be Walden. the theme of this. I didn't dislike it, but yeah, I didn't. You know, I think our first half of the year books were a little better than our second half of the year books. Because that's when we read, like, Educated and... there was oh, a, there I were, had a few good I, ones. I had a couple good ones in here, but, like... A couple. A couple good ones. Uh, I read Walden. Meh. Uh, Walden, I wanted to be really good, and it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. It's just, it's one of those it's books that's, like, it's a classic. So I felt like, I, you know, I had to read it. And I'm glad that I read it, but you really... There's, like long chapters of absolutely nothing and then there'd be like a little snippet of something like well that's that's good so like a, like, little, nugget of a little nugget of wisdom in there but for the most part it was super duper boring uh but i think everyone should like go online and search for www dot <laughs> what's this i feel like there's a mini kaling joke there it doesn't matter um go to google and like search dot... like best quotes from walden.com <laughs> that cannot be a website <laughs> But we look at the best quotes from Walden, and you'll get everything you need from Walden. You know, just like the best wisdom from it. Read two paragraphs and be done with it. Uh, it was, it was, it was just boring. College professors are gonna be very upset that I said that, but normal people are gonna be like, yeah. And then I have, I literally just finished this last night. Washington. That was a bear of a book. It's like 900 pages, 818 pages, depending on the version that you have. Uh, super interesting. Again, if you're really into American Revolutionary War history. A revolutionary time period history uh definitely recommend if you like hamilton the musical you would also find this very interesting because that you you hear the actual stories behind you know these is ron the, Trinell the same one that wrote Hamilton? yes he's the same one who wrote hamilton so i i Which wanted to read these kind of order so i read 1776 first and look that kind of gives me early war and then i you know washington and then i thought i'll do hamilton next so i'm kind of yeah. working through some of the founding fathers there and um in an order that i think kind of makes sense but it was a long, 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 long book. Definitely very interesting, but only if you like that kind of stuff. So Yeah. And then this is the last one I got. I got this at Half Price Books, and it's just all about, there's like two or three pages, just a brief overview of each of the presidents of the United States. And so I'm reading like one president per night, so mm, I can finish it. has got a good book smell. In approximately, oh. sorry, <laughs> approximately 45 days. Because again, you know the big stuff, but I feel like all, all the stuff that I learned in school, I don't even I think I know the big stuff anymore. Um, and so... Just there's like literally three to four pages on each president, sometimes two, because some of them didn't serve very long and some didn't do anything. Uh, but we, we're we also really big into trivia, and I feel like we never, anytime there'd be a question about the presidents, we never knew any of the answers. So I'm like, if I can just get a brief overview of all the presidents, so I have a, a basic idea of who they were and, you know, yeah. what they did, and... Um, and it's 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 pretty interesting. Anyone um, else think Dwight D. Eisenhower kind of looks like Jiminy Cricket? <laughs> I can see that, yeah. There's a lot of people. You I think Bob Iger looks like Jiminy Cricket? He does. I, think, uh, I was going to say, why is that a character for me that like so many people in my head looks like um, Jiminy Cricket? But yeah, there's a, there's been some uh, interesting people in that office over oh, the years. Oh yeah, you were telling me some things. Like someone that like married their daughter. Like, someone married their niece. That uh, was like, he helped raise and yeah, then when she was like 18. Married. That was Grover Cleveland, I think. Uh, I literally was like, yeah, that is... There's, some, next there's level. some dark stuff in there. <laughs> Those are our presidents. That's folks. our history, folks. Uh, so yeah, and I'm reading. Like I said, what about one president per night? So I'm going to try and finish it now because I want to try and finish it, start the new year fresh. So I've got like 20 presidents left. So I might try and blast through those. But I was doing one a night just so. I'm, um, well, you, know, you could be. You yeah. could more thoughtfully read it that yeah. way. So there you go. That's cool. what we've read in the last half of the year. We don't even need to end this because we're gonna we'll go vlog be vlogging more. more. Okay, bye. I need to go work out. That coffee's sitting like a rock in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Gigi insisted on wearing her very special Christmas PJs, right? She said, yeah, I'm just reading. And we're listening to my mom for Christmas got her this little Disney silly songs uh, because she has this little CD player and she only had one CD. So now she's got two CDs. You want to keep listening to it? She says, Dad, I can't answer you. I'm very busy. <laughs> All right, so just finished a workout. I ended up doing another MK Fit video. These are songs about booties. I don't know if any of you guys have like kids around that would be, you know, I don't know. Anyway, uh, not family appropriate. Very fun though. My legs are dead. <laughs> Burned like 215 calories on that. And then I just did like, just strength training and ab stuff and burn like 70 calories there. So I'm like, that's, that's solid. That is a solid workout. So I know Tyler still wanted to work out. So we're gonna swap and I need to also prep dinner and I wanna play with Gigi and Feeling good. I was feeling like bloated and ugh, you ever have those days where you're just like, I don't, huh. you know what I mean? Like you didn't quite sleep right and you just didn't feel good. That's how I was feeling. And this like kicked my little tush into gear and I'm feeling a lot better. So that's good. 
Okay, Jessica just finished her workout, which I'm sure she vlogged about. So now I'm gonna try and get a quick 30 minute workout in before dinner. All right, exactly 30 minutes, not bad. Actually, for not really wanting to work out, I was uh, working pretty hard, so I am pretty happy with that. Now, I gotta go put Chi to bed and then go to dinner. And by go to dinner, I mean have dinner. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna make dinner. Tyler's laying her down. We were just reading a whole bunch of books and she kept saying, she knew it was almost bedtime. She was like, more books, more books. I'm like, oh, Genevieve, you're getting too smart. Anyway, so we're gonna make one of our favorite meals. It's pretty fast. It's from this Skillet Meals cookbook that I'm not even sure if you can get anymore. I know a lot of you guys have successfully gotten it, but then it sold out because I think we talked about it last year and it was already out of print. So like it was already hard to find, you know what I mean? I think. So anyway, I'm going to show it to you anyway because this is awesome. And I think we've made our own version of this because we do adjust a few things that we can link that you can just print the PDF if you'd rather that. So let me show you. So it's tomatoes and chickpeas. So basically you end up getting a can of chickpeas, a can of Rotel tomatoes. I like the mild. The regular is fine, but I am so sensitive to like heat that even that is almost too spicy. So I always tell Tyler, he can just add hot sauce to it if he wants it spicier. So that's pretty much the basis of it. But then you also have eggs and greens you can throw in. This is an awesome way to use up old, like dark green, like salad greens, if you have them, which is exactly what we're going to do. So it just calls for a couple other things like onion, curry powder and stuff, but it's really, really fast to make. Basically you just make this mixture in the pan and then you make the eggs separately, plop the eggs on top, that's it. Now, this is the first time I've ever like actually read this little bit and I've never thought to serve it with like crusty bread or pita wedges. We have some naan that's kind of getting weird. I'm like, maybe we'll just warm the naan bread and serve it with this. I think that'd be good. Alrighty, so we've got it almost done here. I've got to let these greens wilt for about a minute or so. And then I still need to make the eggs, which will just take a few minutes. We like to do them over easy. And then that'll be that. We'll put this in a bowl and we'll put the eggs on top. And then, like I said, I'm gonna heat up some naan bread to go with it. And it's so, so yummy, you guys. Alrighty, it is done. I plopped my eggs down a little wonky. <laughs> but we really like when they're still runny like that because it just, that's what makes the dish, I think, for both of us, oh. yeah. Mm. Totally. Yeah. Okay, we are done with dinner and I think we're going to play, and by think, I mean, I know, we're gonna play little scrap ball and watch Saturday Night Live because it's like the only thing that's uh, on right now. All of our other shows like Bob's Burgers and Family Guy and Superstore and everything else we watch is all off the air mm -hmm. right now. So And we love Jason Bateman. So we're yeah, so Jason, yeah. Well, I haven't seen the last three, so let's dive in. So I just learned that a favorite YouTuber of mine, I've been crying, uh, a favorite YouTuber of mine just announced she was pregnant and they have been trying for a long time. So it was very, very exciting news. I actually filmed about it already but I was crying way too hard and I'm like Jessica <laughs> pull it together so anyway so that's exciting but I think we're gonna sign off Tyler won at Scrabble yep always do it wasn't by that well, I was like, it was done, it, we, Scrabble often enough honestly the the very last uh letter or the the very last word I threw down one letter and I beat you by 18 points but we were ex that's if true. I had not we played that last down. letter we would have tied but it was a wool and low and it was like a double word score. So I just. Yeah, you nailed it. it. That was good. And we were at the point letter. in the game where we were each playing one letter and it'd be like two points. Is like in, it, no, no, on. Yeah. So you threw in that one in. Yeah, at the I just saw it there at the last second. second. I was like, oh, Jess, do you have anything else to play? Are you done? Are you done? You just. You, and she's like, it. I'm like, perfect. My last turn. Wool, low, done so. <laughs> Dunzo and the Bunzo is pretty good. We're very evenly matched, pretty much with word games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I typically win, but. <laughs> 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 anyway so we're gonna uh, let y'all go here yeah i gotta go pick a new book to read i just Ooh. finished uh washington last night exciting so alexander washington <laughs> George here comes hamilton. a general here comes hamilton japonica <laughs> No one gets that they don't have to i do <laughs> anyway all right so we love you all we'll see you tomorrow we only got a couple more of these yeah, that's so. That's my comedic style. Is just go off on something, and no one has until no one has any idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm the guy who nailed the joke. Or wait, <laughs> yeah, kills the bit. See, that's anyway. a bit no one is gonna get. There's gonna be three well, people who saw, saw the Saturday Night Live from we three just weeks saw. ago <laughs> and right. watched all the way to the very my end. My arm's falling asleep, Tyler. I gotta, right, I'm right. about to drop my phone. Bye, guys. <laughs>